Hello lovely people, how are you today? Today's video is a baking video and you know, let's just get straight into it. Let's go to my kitchen. Hello there, it's a bit cramped in here. I do have the world's smallest kitchen, well that doesn't matter. We're making scones today. Here are the ingredients. For these scones you need flour, salt, castor sugar, raisins, eggs, butter, baking powder and milk. Very basic ingredients, I mean you don't have to climb Mount Everest with a Sherpa to be able to grow it. It's simple. Okay, I'm going to follow my recipe down here, which is just out of shot. I hope. It is anyway. Okay, you need to start, you need to preheat the oven to 230 degrees. Scones need to be up very high. I have a fan oven, so you take off 10. So I'm going to put it on to 220 degrees or 450 Fahrenheit. You Americans, you have a very odd system of measurement there, and gas mark A. Okay, you start off by sieving the flour, salt, baking powder, and the castor sugar into a large bowl. Okay. The more baking powder you put in, the higher they'll rise, but be careful because once you go over a certain amount of baking powder, they will taste like death. Now you mix these together. I use a whisk, you know, just to keep down um, the lumps. You know, hopefully um, it won't all lump together, you know. Okay, now it gets a bit messy. You have to rub in the butter into the flour, you know, kind of like in a pinching movement to make it look kind of like breadcrumbs. It's, you know, if you've baked before, it should be easy enough, but if you haven't, this is quite tricky. And, of course, my butter is too hard to be rubbed in. It's microwave time, but be so incredibly careful. If you're one nanosecond out, it does become liquid. See, that piece is fine there. Okay, you just... It's very simple. Like that. Okay, once you have all that incorporated, there shouldn't be any big lumps of butter in it. It should just look like the flour again, basically. So now that the butter is incorporated, we need to go and make the liquid that we're going to mix in with this. What you need to use now is some sort of Pyrex jug or a jug that has measurements along the side. Or just a jug if you have like a separate measurement scale for liquids. Okay, so I've just added my milk, my 200 milliliters of milk into this, and now I need to crack two eggs into it. These are free range eggs, by the way, so I've got to beware of baby fetuses and whatnot. Seriously, that can happen, and it's completely disgusting. No baby fetuses for today. Okay, just I'm gonna try and break the yolks first. It's a bit easier. They're broken. There we go. And now, this is the point in, if you're adding raisins or sultanas or currants or any sort of dried fruit into scones, which is obviously, it's optional. Uh, I hate, I like, I like plain scones, I don't like putting fruit in, but it's kind of like me against my family on this, so I, I have to put raisins in, even though they're rotten. Actually, I'm putting sultanas in. So just put in as many as you really want, as many as you think. about enough. Okay, now I've incorporated all of the uh, sultanas into it. You just mix it around with your hand. And now you just need to make a little, a well in the center of your mixture. And that's where you're going to pour your liquid. Don't pour it all in at once. Put about half of it in first. And get your hands in. If you've incorporated all of the uh, liquids that you've put in and it's still quite dry and crummy, just add more until you have used most of the uh, milk and egg liquid. Okay, once you've incorporated all of the um, 
well not all of the mixture, most of the liquid into the dough, it should come together, it shouldn't be too wet, it shouldn't be too dry, but it should hold, right? I think that's well enough flour. And just drop your mixture on. Cool. Also, you should get all get one of these. This is the handiest thing I've ever bought for baking in my life. I bought a baking shop for two euro. It's literally a godsend. Okay, what you've basically got to do now is effectively knead the dough just, you know, to get the uh, gluten and whatnot working. Okay, once you've kneaded that for about five to ten minutes, it should look, well, nice and smooth and quite doughy, like that. Now we need to roll it out. Just reflour the surface and flour the rolling pin. Put that on and just start rolling like normal. Now you need to keep it quite thick. Once it's about, let's see, what's it? About an inch, an inch to two inches thick. Stop and get your cutter. I'm using a round five inch, five inch, five centimeter um, cutter, which I think I'll use the um, crumpled side for this. Just drop your cutter near the edge. You push down, do not twist it. Very, very important, do not twist it. It stops them from rising. You could use your rolling pin, take it out, just rip there and scone number one onto a very well floured baking tray. And once you've come to something that looks like this, you just ball it back up again and re-roll and continue cutting. Okay, I got roughly nine scones out of that. They're all odd and even, you know. They don't all have to be perfect. You're not selling these to Mary Berry or anyone. But now, hey, do you remember this that we used earlier? You should have a little bit of it left over. We're going to use that to egg wash with. See? Nothing's wasted here. My number one tip about egg washing. Do not let it trickle down over the sides. Because that will cause them to rise unevenly. Okay, all my scones are nice and egg washed right now. So now they're ready to be baked in the oven. Put these in the oven for 7 to 10 minutes. And watch out in case you get blinded by the smoke in your oven. And close that. I'm gonna set the timer. Seven minutes. Cool. Okay, here are the, the scones on display. You can get a kind of closer look to what they actually look like. Yeah, scones. Very simple. Hope you can try them at home. Done.